Hello everyone. I'm here to, to talk about uh, creating Canaccess remote teams. Because building a good team of developers is very hard, but building a good team of developers that like to share the knowledge and write good product documentation is even harder. In a world of COVID, where many companies were left with no choice but left employees to work remotely from day to day, all of them had to find a solution of how to share the product knowledge between team members and between teams. So let's talk about a bit of, about my background, what challenges we are trying to solve and how we work in our team. Currently, together with my team, we are responsible for migrating the legacy code base to a new test stack. The new test stack is based on Next.js, TypeScript, and excessive testing on the front end side, while the backend is based on the serverless architecture and GraphQL data providers with the help of legacy backend code base too. The backend of these projects is too huge to migrate it very quickly, and yet it's not very well documented, as well as the front end part. So we're moving piece after piece. I'm speaking to you at UXDX community conference because I want to share with you my story. This story starts like a with the other story, but it ends somewhat differently. It has a happy ending. The story is about the failure. It all began a long time ago. A few years back, there was a decision made to reboot the project codebase following some new approaches. It was all going well until it stopped going well. The project was growing. The new people were joining teams and nobody took care of documenting decisions and approaches. That led the project to a situation where each team was introducing own approaches to develop features and maintain it in the short term. It would not be even that bad, but people started leaving teams, joining other projects and still there was no documentation. At the end, maintaining the project was like fighting with Hydra. You fix one bug, but two new were introduced because some potentially unrelated feature was broken. And it happens at least twice, until my team took responsibility of setting up standards. Then everything started looking better and better. So who am I? My name is Piotr Nalepa. I've been developing web apps and helping to grow other developers since 2009. Now I'm working for Alex Group in the real estate department. We are building web apps for autodom.po, imovirtual.com, ostoria.ro. Our, our role is to build a solid technical foundation for becoming a lighthouse in the market of real estate. In my free time, I'm sharing knowledge on my personal blog, where you can find a lot of articles regarding web development. Some of you might already heard about it. It's a, the tribal knowledge is a, is a knowledge spread vocally. There is no written document. You have to remember everything or it might fail because you forgot an important piece of that knowledge or whole at once. Having the possibility to write down all the details of some particular solution is something that brought us from the stone age to the modern world. With technology, we have spreading knowledge, learning from it, understanding the processes in the past is something that we should make a use from day one when starting, when starting a new project. It's for safety of you, me, your company, your work, or your own business. So what can go wrong? Because everything works right now, right? Well, everything can go wrong in the long term, because you just don't know. You just don't know why a given coding approach was chosen. Uh, what was the pros and cons of the selected approach? What else was considered to use at that time in the past? You know just nothing. Uh, were there any options considered? Have you considered using UJS or Angular? Why, why not? Thinking, thinking about obvious features is easy, but during the app life cycle, there can be features implemented that relies one on another. Without having them written down somewhere, there's no way to make future ourselves or even other people aware of how big the product is and what are the connections between the different parts that seem to be unrelated. When business is not going well, you might also want to check whether somewhere in an app development lifecycle, 
anything bad has been added to the project. Or maybe you just want to make sure that reducing the scope of server architecture won't break your app and you will avoid losing money. Without proper documentation, devs keep on reinventing the wheel over and over again. At the end, your product teams end up maintaining multiple versions of the same page components like NAS or search forms or data providers. In order to avoid such situations, we have to stop and think, how can we do better? How to improve company communication within the team? For remote teams, clear communication is even more important than for the in-house teams. When working remotely, you have no chance to see all the details of a team member's reaction. You have no chance to see how, how he behaves. Most of times, the communication is based on written sentences. And here we get to the point. The real win is asynchronous communication. We try to avoid as much as possible online brainstorming meetings because it's difficult to focus for more than 30 minutes on a call. Instead, we've implemented the culture of open ideas. Everyone can contribute to the project decisions. The culture of open ideas in remote teams is achieved by creating docs, writing down the ideas in confluence, preparing proofs or concepts, and presenting the outcome of it in confluence pages again. Another way of communicating ideas is done through the Slack app. If someone has a loose idea in one mind, then such a developer can communicate it on a division Slack channel. If the idea gets some interest, we encourage to write the docs so we can analyze it, it in our own pace and in the time we find the most suitable for us. This is really important because everyone has different styles of work. Everyone has different moments in a day that they work the most effectively. Putting ideas in docs and making a habit of reading the docs and involving in discussions asynchronously is crucial for our success. The answer to all the issues mentioned earlier in what can go wrong section is to document decisions you and your team are making in the process of software development. The first non-obvious thing that it, that it improves is onboarding docs for newcomers. I bet you had that feeling in your career. You're joining a new project, new team, you've landed a new job. You got introduced into your project, but still you have no idea on how to start coding and contribute to your code base. Probably you kept asking your new teammates about how to do something, why that done a given way, etc. Having such docs help you a lot in many ways and reduce a need for any additional meetings. Having the docs pays off by not wasting developers' time on answering the same questions over and over again. The questions that, co that comes from the new team members. So the experienced developers will focus on things that matters in order to make projects or business going successful without any distractions in the development phase. And at time, when some new team member has an idea, one can check the docs check the decisions team made in the past. Even the previous feature analysis can be reviewed and updated according to the new situation. If there's a new, better solution, then it might be worth to discuss it and make some action points. For instance, doing a spike of proof of concept. Additionally, documenting the coding best practices the team incorporated is this introduction of new developers to a project. They will have less stressful first contributions in the projects with a high chance of not having many comments regarding the code styling and conventions they use. In most cases, such things will be solved by automated tools like ESLint or Peter on the front end side. It's still the documentation. At the end, in order to have such a comfortable distractless situation, we have to remember about one thing. It all requires team engagement. Saying that writing the documentation is important is very easy, but such expectations has to be a goal of everyone in the team. If fellow developers doesn't want to contribute to such documentation process, then the idea is senseless. It, it requires effort, but it's pays off in the long term. So let's take a look at the process we are following in our department. At the beginning, 
there's always an idea or vi vision of how to do something. Then we are creating a document called RFC. Then we are waiting for comments from other team members in order to get the uh, best possible solution for our challenge. After commenting, uh, the author and of the team is making a decision. After making a decision, we are creating another document called ADR. And then we start implementing the idea. This process is very important because it clarifies the need of the team and uh, brings some standards to uh, defining uh, new processes, new ideas, new solutions, new approaches for coding, and how to uh, keep the knowledge in the team. So what is the RFC? Maybe some of you have heard that term before. It's basically a request for comments. It's a document where you can have a discussion before implementation. You can get to know what others think about an idea. You can ask for help in particular challenges. This document should be non-decisive. It should be stored in a specific non-bio place so everyone knows where to look for the information. This document should have an author, due date, title, status, and description so it's easy to determine who made the document and what it is about and what is its status. It can be approved, rejected, on hold, in progress, anything. Any, any status that your team decides to use. Let's talk about how to make a good RFC document, actually. A good RFC document has a clean structure. It's very important uh, to make uh, the document very predictable and uh, to follow the same structure in all the documents. So each document should contain proper meta description. Like I mentioned earlier, uh, the document should contain the author, the title, the status, due date, and uh, it should just give basic information. What is it about? The document should also clearly define a problem so everyone can understand where are the, the dragons. RFC provides at least one possible solution. Analysis or research takeaways. It's important uh, to acknowledge other team members that some, the RFC author had made some investigation and is looking for uh, some other options, um, is looking for comments or for making the final decision. On this slide, you can see some sample RFC document I have created some time ago. It consists of meta section, table of contents, background description section where the challenge is described, possible solutions, explanations, conclusions, and optionally some things to think about in the future if the idea gets approved. Of course, not everything I mentioned here is visible on this slide, but I just wanted to show you that there is a meta description section and table of contents containing links to each section we are, I have described. There's also one thing to mention. You might be wondering, should I put a comment in every, every uh, RFC? I think no. If you are interested in the topic explained in the RFC, you have no meaningful comment to add, you can always click on the like button if it exists. It means you have read the docs and you like it. If you don't do anything, then it means that you don't care. Having strict deadlines helped making decisions faster. I found it very common when no strict due date was set, then the idea got blurred within the time and it was not implemented at the end. Furthermore, setting up a strict deadline helps other developers, the ones interested in the topic, to focus on the topic and not to put it away to get back to it someday in the future. If a developer didn't take part in the discussion in a particular RFC, then such person's voice becomes unheard and not so important. At the end, usually it's not up to RFC auto to make a final decision. Decision, It's a team effort in most cases. Only some minor architectural decisions can be taken by a single developer, like setting up some ESL rules for code cleaner. Another document that is worth mentioning is, is 
ADO, ADO, the architectural decision log, which is a collection of architecture, architecture decisions records. It's the final destination where all the decision logs should be stored. Anything outside of it is not a final decision and should not be followed by any developer. The ADR, ADO is a consist list of project decisions with explanations that is easier to read for project management. Business has to have an op opportunity to understand why developers took some decisions when building the app. The ADR is a document containing a problem context and a description of the consequences of a particular decision that was applied in order to solve some specific challenge in the project. This is the final decision record. Every developer should follow that with no doubt and questions, because the time for questions and doubts was in the RFG comment sections. ADRs uh, reduces a big amount of tribal knowledge because we have a list of final decisions and everyone is agreed to follow it. ADR strengthens the tooling around, around it in support of agile practices, as well as iterative and incremental engineering processes. Docu such documents build a written down history of a project development and a, de and a decision making process. Project history awareness makes the future development better. ADRs register some top decisions made upon RC comments and discussions. So how to make a good ADR? In general, the ADR document is structure is very similar to RFC. It contains a clean meta description with auto decision status, decision date, decision excerpt, and a link to RFC document. The problem should be defined briefly. There's no need to duplicate the whole problem description from RFC. You can just refer to it uh, in the, in the uh, description. The final decision is briefly described in the document. Usually, in our team, the decisions are put in the RFC, and the, in the ERs, we're giving a short description of the final decision. Just one tip from my end. If you want to keep ADRs in the conference, then I suggest using labels in order to make a nice appearance of decisions in the summary page. Without it, uh, looking for ADRs uh, will be a bit tougher. On this slide, you can see uh, some sample ADR document. It's a kind of similar to RFC in the structure, but it has some differences as well. There's meta section, then below it, we put short description of the challenge we solve and the final decision. So everyone is aware how to, uh, what was the decision, what is the outcome, what was the problem we solved, and everyone agreed to follow that. To summarize my today's speech, I suggest avoid tribal knowledge, to make communication asynchronous. Reward creating new docs. Show other developers how they can make profit from it. Show that they can reduce amount of meetings and they could then focus on things, on things that matters. And finally, maintain the docs. Usually newcomers are great docs maintainers because they can easily spot outdated pieces of documentation. Thank you.